Last week, New York City finally got to see and hear the Rolling Stones. We were the last stop on a tour that I'm sure most of you have heard about, as it was reported all over the country. Took them into 30 cities in about six weeks, a grueling trip. It earned them, according to uh, published estimates, between three and four million dollars. And the tour was amazingly complicated, not only logistically in terms of moving them and the more than a hundred people that travel with them and all the equipment from city to city. But uh, their last tour of the United States had ended in a place called Altamont, California, where four people in the audience uh, of a free and unscheduled concert uh, died, one of them from stab wounds, and the argument goes on about how and what is to blame for that, or how that could have been prevented, I should say. Anyway, uh, with that in mind, they came to the States again. Mick Jagger, the singer with the group, um, a fascinating man. He's been described variously as the supreme sexual object in modern Western culture. That's a quote. A compound of menace and energy is another one. Uh, a sadomasochistic freak is another one, and a musical genius, and a pussycat, various other things. Last Tuesday afternoon, anyway, I went to Madison Square Garden to meet Mick Jagger and the Rolling Stones and to talk to them and the people around them and find out who and what they are, and I don't know if I found out exactly, but uh, tonight on the show you will be seeing the results of, of that visit. I had hoped to be able to talk to uh, Mick Jagger more than I did. He had two concerts that day, and he was going to be there between them, but uh, as you'll see, he was so beat from the first concert, he left the building right after the first concert. I did have time to ask him some things, and um, we have for you tonight then an impression, uh, I think a fairly accurate one, of what goes on outside, inside, and backstage at Madison Square Garden when the Rolling Stones are in town. It will occupy the first hour of the show tonight, and it's fascinating. After that, you'll be seeing an interview which I did with Bobby Fischer, the chess genius, that was back in January. And at that time, he knew that he would be beating Boris Spassky, uh, I mean, meeting him, beating him as a Freudian slip, uh, for the World Championship sometime this summer. And he has a lot of interesting things to say about how to outwit an opponent. When the uh, interview first ran, a lot of you probably didn't know who Bobby Fischer was. Uh, now it seems everybody knows, and I don't think that he's changed that much in the last six months. My only regret is that Bobby Fischer and Mick Jagger aren't here together. Be interesting to find out what they have to say to each other. Fischer could tell Mick how it's best to work in silence. And uh, Jagger could explain groupies to Fisher. It'd be fun to see his face when he does. Uh, anyway, we'll be back after this message with the first piece of film from Madison Square Garden. Stay with us. Uh, there had been people milling around outside Madison Square Garden for weeks before the Rolling Stones actually arrived. Uh, the ticket was literally the hottest ticket in town. There were reports that distraught fans had forked out over $100 a seat to scalpers. And uh, they all cost $6.50, but you could only get them by sending in a postcard. I tried to swap a couple tickets to No-No and Annette, but I didn't get anywhere. And uh, then I went into the garden uh, to meet Jagger and the band. Before I did, though, I talked to some of the people waiting to get in, and here's that. What are you doing here? Well, I've been a fan for a long time. I came to the 69 concert, and I had to come to this one. You came to the 69 concert? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, how do you get tickets for this? I sent in 66 postcards. Is that fair? Sure. I'd do anything to get here. <laughs> Would you say you're fanatical about the Stones, or do you just like them a lot? Well, I'm not really a fanatic about it, but this is what's going on in this city now. I mean, it's a summer vacation, you gotta, you gotta live. And yeah. uh, I'm not as freaky as some of the kids are, but I like to see the concert. Is it what's gonna happen on stage that you uh, want to see mostly, or is it what's inside in the, in the audience too, you know what I mean? Well, it's gonna be a, a total experience, and I really don't want to miss it. Yeah. What do you think about Jagger? What do you think about Jagger? Well, he is, uh, he's one of a kind, put yeah. it that way, yeah. There's no one like him. If you were to meet, if you met him, what would you want to know about from him? If you could ask him anything. I'd ask him what he was on. I sent a card in, and they picked my name out, I guess. I'd... Did you only send one card in? No, I sent six. And I got it on my girlfriend's name, Jan. Were you thrilled when it came in the mail? I got it Wednesday. I almost had a heart attack. <laughs> she called me up. I, I, you know, we gave up hope, and she called me up and said they called me today, and they said you got a ticket, and I was like, oh my God, I don't believe it. Well, if I were Mick Jagger, what would you want to know from me? Um, how much do you weigh? What do I weigh? Why do you want to know that? I don't know. I always like to know how much people weigh. You figure he weighs more after a concert than before? No, less, because he works so much. That's what I meant. I got it backwards. Oh. <laughs> My eyes deceive me. Are you a postman? What is it? Are you a postman? Yes, sir. And I like to see a lot of young people. It means that I, 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 I like, and I like, like music at the same time, even though I'm past 30, but still I feel under 30. So, so you can all trust me. Well, Jagger will be past 30 in a year or so, won't he? It's all right, but I'm still going to like him even then, and I think he can go till 40. Do you have a ticket? 
No, I, I'm still working. I can go see the show, and I don't want to pay $75 for a scalper, no matter how much I like the rocks. You have a slight accent. Where are you from? I'm Israeli. The thing I'd like to know from Mick is, like, now that he's much older, if he enjoys playing to the crowds that are so much younger than he was, like, years ago when he was playing to his own, like, peer group, like... Do you think, do you think it's the same crowd that used to come, or is it a younger crowd while he's getting older? It's younger. It's definitely a younger crowd than it used to be. It's younger, but it's the same crowd. How, how old are you two? Well, I'm 21. You're 20. Basically, the, most of the people, I think, are younger. They've been saying across the country. And I'm wondering how he feels about it. Yeah. Yeah. I just wonder how he feels. My mother you know, wants to... If he's still enjoying performing to uh, a much younger crowd than to his own peers or whatever. If he thinks he's playing to people much below him or, you know, not that the people are below him, but just like his music quality. I just wanted to make a comment about uh, the difference between the crowd, uh, let's say, today as opposed to two years ago. And that's it. Um, you know, like a lot of people come to the concert now and... They know they're not going to come in, get in, and they come to make trouble, and it sort of ruins, like, the nice thing, you know, that about concerts that, you know, used to be kind of atmosphere. Now, like, people are scalping tickets for three times the value of their worth, and I don't think it's a very nice thing. And I wish, you know, I'd just like to ask people to stop doing it, and I'd, and I'd also like, you know, Mick Jagger um, to say the way that he feels about it, because I'm sure he doesn't condone behavior like that. Maybe I get a chance to ask him later. Yeah. Are, are you are you coming to the concert? No. Why are you here then? I don't know. Why aren't you in school? There's no school. That's right. I wanted to see if you knew. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Oh hi. Come in. Step in. My children will die. Wait 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 wait. You 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 have your children with you? No, they're at home. Are, are, where are you from? Portchester, New York. Are you a housewife? Yes, mother. And you're going to the concert? Mm-hmm. How did you get tickets and how many? I just bought one up the street. Hold on to it very tight. Hold on to it because people uh, have been known to uh, get them away from people. Did you know about that? $25. Wow, that's pretty cheap. $25. But how, are you going or are your children? No, I am. They're going tomorrow night. Do they know you're here? Yes. Do I hope. <laughs> Is your husband a, a Stones fan? No. No. Just you? And my children really turned me on to the music, and that's how I grew to love it, and that's how come I'm here. <laughs> oh, I feel foolish. <laughs> well, you shouldn't feel foolish. Do you have a poster of uh, Mick Jagger up in the kitchen or anything? No. <laughs> like that. You just like the sound? Yes, I just like him. Do you know where you'll be sitting? Uh, I hope, and it could sit. <laughs> they said it was... Let me get my hands on that. Put it back, put it back. It makes me nervous. <laughs> oh. Man's upset about being behind the stage here. No, no, I think he... There's a little letters that's hidden on the side of the table. Yeah, behind the stage. I got those little letters. When you get home, you see it, then you flip out. Yeah. <laughs> At least you're there. At least you're there. Here the music. Come on, Would you want to meet Mick Jagger? I can't, I can't arrange it, but I mean, if you did, do you have any idea what you'd talk about? I have a son that reminds me of him. <laughs> How old is the son? Uh, he's eight years old. Uh -huh. <laughs> Aha. Yeah, but, ja but, but Jagger is twice that old. I just something about him reminds me of him. I have a few children, and he's just different from all the rest. School twice that old. Never mind. And being so different, I don't know. He just does. Ah, in order for me and my jolly film crew to actually get inside Madison Square Garden, we had to wear strange buttons with battleships and strange pieces of silver tape on, and the security was amazing. There was also a general sense of tight security. I, uh, I was told that those with tickets had to show them to at least six different sets of guards, from New York policemen to ticket takers inside the garden. Uh, a lot of people were searched. However, we did get inside, and uh, then we began to wait. I began to wonder if the man I had talked to on the phone was Mick Jagger and if he was going to show up. I'm still wondering. Um, let's take a look. Hey, hey, that isn't fair. You're not supposed to do me. I'm supposed to be doing you. Would you like a, a carrot? <laughs> uh, do, should we go in here where, it's, yeah. where there are less people? Okay. Oh, well. Morning. Morning. Can you sort of uh, tell me where, um, my way around in here? I don't know who's who and what's what. Who's, yeah. what do, doesn't all this upset you, all these people? Yeah, it's a pretty crowded for a morning show. Yeah. I don't know where the band, I bet the band's hidden. How did you sleep after the opening night last night? Not very well, man. Didn't sleep? Didn't sleep at all. Yeah. I just slept a couple of hours. Do you pop up in the morning after opening night and grab the papers and no. do any of that stuff? <laughs> that makes sense. Okay. I just thought I'd check that. Say, I don't know if I was supposed to see this or not, but there was a plate of something going around, people offering me little pills. Vitamins and salt. Vitamins and salt pills. Yeah. They told me they were, but eventually I... C and salt. Yeah. Clean the salt with plenty of water. Yeah. Will that help? Do you do any kind of uh, exercises every day to keep... 
feed it. Yeah, last night I forgot. So you do the warm-up exercise and I pulled a muscle. Okay. That's the way it goes. You ever hurt yourself on stage? No. I was at, talking to the kids outside before I came in here. And um, they were very upset about the scalping. They said some guys are offering tickets for $75 and they said that ruins the atmosphere for them. And they wanted yeah. to know if you, if you agreed and all that. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, but that's just a free enterprise system now. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> the tickets aren't set at $75, you know. I know. But I mean, I guess and they also they're, they're arresting scalpers, you know. They arrested they lots and lots of them yesterday. Yeah. Which, I mean, you may or may not. I wonder what the penalty is for that. Probably a very small fight. You know? When you, were, when you were in the London School of Economics, were you a Keynesian economist or what? That's what I was, I was bribed. That's what I was told that I was going to be, yeah, Keynesian, yeah. And how did you decide not to graduate? Or did you graduate? Bye, oh, bye. Yeah, well, I it, just decided. Yeah, do, you, do, you, do you ever run into your old friends from no. economic school? And no, I had a few guitar players that were there, but yeah. I hadn't seen them for a long time. Yeah. But I didn't think that really that... I couldn't understand. They told me that I could, until I took the master's degree, I never really get into it, you know, because there's so many unknown factors in painting. I can't You didn't want to give your life to that. No, no. Mm -hmm. Did they get all upset in England as much as they did here for a time about uh, lyrics of what can be sung in the air? And, oh yeah, they're still uh, really into it. Yeah. No, they won't, and they, and they won't. If you if you say um, any advertised brand name, they won't play the record either. Well, the big there was so a big flap here. They won't play that. If you say a brand. If you say, yeah. uh, I, I, I drove up in a Cadillac, they won't uh, play. Yeah. There's all what, kinds of problems. What about when um, there was a whole thing here about uh, any lyrics that mentioned drugs, um, whether they could be played or not, there was a big flap over that. Do they, do they have that over there, too? About yeah, a bit of that, yeah. They yeah. banned a lot of records. Yeah. Did, what's the theory behind that? They figure that if people hear any mention of drugs on the air, they're immediately going to run out and start taking them. Yeah. And, um, yeah, yeah they've, um, but they've got all kinds of other things, you know, where they, where they, they think that any kind of, uh, any kind of, uh, you know, they want to be clever, so any kind of reference to anything, if they can twist it around to meet something else, they'll stop playing the record. Yeah. They don't want to play records in England on the radio, basically. Have you ever been approached to give advice? I know a lot of rock superstars have been asked to make commercials about drugs and things and advice. No, no one's ever asked me to do it. Yeah. Well, I was once. If they did, but well, I don't know what I'd do if they did. I once yeah. made some ads for, for for people in Virginia to 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 get polio shots. That's all. Or something yeah. like that. Or workers in mines to get this injection yeah. against that. I'm sure they didn't know who I was, but I did. Yeah. <laughs> Are you my, your mother and dad both alive? Yeah. Yeah. Do they do they ever see you work? Oh yeah. Yeah. In London. Yeah. They think of their wandering boy. They, uh, I don't know. That's what you mean. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> We'll just do they come to concerts? Do you want to do it all now, Dick? Excuse me. We could. Yeah, yeah, we can cut. Because I've got to get ready. No, I don't have a lot of time because he's nearly finished. Okay. It's TV. Uh, Gives me 20 minutes. And we'll be back with an interview with Bill Wyman right after this message. Kerry Sayers. Ellie Pie Hong. I think Jagger went off to... Uh, put on his spangles and fringes, and the rest of the group seemed to be just sort of sitting around in a relaxed fashion, waiting for uh, Stevie Wonder to finish, who was the first part of the concert. Bill Wyman's a bass player for the Rolling Stones. He seemed like a friendly chap, so I asked him a couple of questions. I must say, I felt a little bit like the uh, illegitimate son of the Eyewitness News team here, but it was, it was fun. Here's me and Bill Wyman. Um, by the way, it's a banana on his T-shirt. What's running through your nervous system right now, Bill? Are you worried? Are you scared? Do you matinees give you the oh, no. wellies or anything? No? I'm just tired. How about your feet? Very tired. Would you ever do 30 cities again in that amount of time if it were up to you? Yeah. I think it's been too it's close as together. As long as I get a holiday, you know? Yeah. I don't know. But uh, we've, we've done it before a lot of times. You're so but protected from this. There's thing. never been so much energy as on this tour, you know? Yeah. We've had about five tours before of 30, 35 cities, 40 cities. What, what's, I wonder what happened on this one that made it that way. What, what is it? It's just the energy. It's, yeah. just, it's just a tremendous thing all the time on stage, you know? It always used to be screamers, you know? Yeah. And uh, they didn't seem to worry much about the music, but it was being played at the same time, but you never heard it. But now you hear everything, and you see everything, and, and there's so much tension, sort of, you know. Can you tell if on. it's the same audiences that came to earlier tours, or are you hitting a younger group now that hadn't 
I've seen Stones tours before. Oh, we used to hit the sort of 15 or 20, 15 or 20s. Now it's the 15 or 30s. The, 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 the fans grew up and they're still coming, and the younger ones are starting coming as well, which is yeah. great. You know, you're not playing those old old people. <laughs> you're not getting the mums and dads coming after all. You know, we didn't really want them the to old, uh, the very old people who like Tom Jones. Yeah, right. Yeah. Is Tom Jones that old? Well, I don't know how old Tom is, but I always heard that middle-aged ladies uh, were yeah. very uh, excited by Tom. I think Tom's excited by middle-aged ladies as well. That's an exclusive, then. <laughs> you know, I, I didn't know about that. Um, do you, are, are you a chain smoker? No. You smoke very much? No. no. You, you're, down to the, you're burning the filter there. No, I'm not. Oh, you're not? No. Well, one of us is right. Where do you come from? Looks town? like I'm burning the filter. Um, uh, London. I'm grammar school, which is... It's a, it's a school below university. I don't know, I don't know what you call it. Yeah. I went to about 16 and a half. Did you like school? Yeah, school's yeah. all right. Yeah. I, liked, I like sport. Yeah. Have you ever thought of going back when you finish with all this? Uh, it's a school. school or, like, or, did they do that that much in England? No. Yeah. Once you've quit, you've quit. Yeah, right. Yeah. Most, but most kids leave about 15, 15 and a half in England. Mm -hmm. school. So you start at four years old in England. Three and a half. Right, in Sweden, they don't start you school. Can you mature faster than we do somewhere? I don't know where they, Maybe it's the weather. <laughs> can you imagine... Uh, can you put yourself at 50? Have you ever thought of a height? What are we doing in 50 or 60? I had Lennon uh, on. I have no idea what I'm doing next year. I don't know about 50. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Retired. Doing, uh, if the Stones broke up, I don't want to start any rumors because there aren't any, but if they did, say next week after this tour, what would you do? Retire? Form another group? No, I'd, uh, I'd just get together with some people and play some more music, make some more records. I mean, not, not, I wouldn't form a group, but I'd, I'd probably join some other people, some nice musicians. Yeah. But uh, we're not, so it doesn't matter. You couldn't just turn off the music for the rest oh, of your no. life. Yeah. Who are those kids over there? The little girl is um, the blonde there. That's Shirley's. Uh, Charlie and Shirley's. Charlie what's the drummer's the little drummer. Girl. Yeah. I don't know the other one. The, the Mark is the other one. The tall one, the boy. That's Jim Price, the, the trumpet player's little, little oh, boy. Yeah. He's got another one at the hotel. Mine's at the hotel today as well. They're just uh, taking it easy. What will you do when you get back now from this tour? Do you have a period yeah, of rest? I'm, I'm going to Bermuda for a week. I've got relatives there. So. To see you perform. You know, I mean, your older relatives? No. They don't? No, they do in England sometimes, but uh, they're very rowdy, you know. Has there been anything on this trip that scared you or had any bad moments? Or you were worried that something was going to happen? Menacing. No, just seeing the cops beat kids up scares me sometimes. You know? Anyway? When you see the cops beat the kids up, that scares me a bit sometimes. Was there much of that this time? Not too much, not as much as usual, but we have seen it, you know, you do see... You do see them grab guys out of the audience, take them out. And yeah. They, they go through a whole thing on the way, you know, with sticks and... It's pretty rough, you know, they don't deserve it. Is there such a thing as too much security for a concert? Can it affect how you play? Yeah, it's all right, as long as they don't get in the way, you know, they usually sort of try to get in the front there and stop, and, and they cause more trouble than the, there is, you know. As soon as you clear the cops away, then it's all cool. It happened at a lot of shows where cops were in the front and there was a lot of trouble going on and we got the cops to go, mm -hmm. you know, and then it's fine. The kids yeah. were fine, you know, it's just that thing, the cops are in the way and they want to get past them, you know. Do the guys in the group still talk about Altamont ever and what happened there? Is it faded? We talk about it, yes, but yeah. I don't I'd sooner have any like theories to or... forget about it, you know. Yeah. It's just a very unfortunate thing. It was, the, it was the last show of a tour, uh, and we all, you know, we weren't going to do it. It was just a live concert. Yeah. Uh, a, a free concert that was set out a few days before, and... Uh, I mean, there was, uh, I don't know, 300,000 people there. There was only 30 people fighting. I mean, almost all the audience right. never even saw it. Didn't even know what was no going on, you know. Can you walk out on stage ever and know it's just a bad night if the audience is not with you and something's wrong and bad, bad atmosphere, bad vibes? No, it hasn't happened on this tour, you know. Um, 
you, you get more hung up about whether you're, the sound on the stage is good, whether you can hear everybody. You know, we've got monitors everywhere. Professional problems. Yeah. Yeah. And whether your amplifier blows up, you know, that's... <laughs> Better if it But the audiences blow. have been fantastic, you know, yeah. very receptive. Friday, through the decades, remembers the Vietnam War from the bravery of the first... Uh, by now, Stevie Wonder had finished his set, and there's a tremendous tension in the place. Uh, as, and the Jagger and Stones were all set to go on, and I waited for him in a, in a room while somebody took some pictures of him with a prize fighter out in the hall. There are weird things always going on backstage at Madison Square Garden. Probably right now as we sit here they are, but uh, he eventually came inside and allowed me to uh, inflict myself on him. Again, right before going on, which I think is very nice. Uh, uh, as you look at this, it's literally only minutes until he goes outside onto a stage and exudes solid energy to 20,000 people. Notice how calm we both are, even though he had 20,000 people waiting and I had three listless staff members waiting for a cab <laughs> for me. Um, if anybody... Are you, are you all right? No, I'm just beating the insects off. And there are, they're everywhere. Oh, I thought you got all that. Okay. If anybody tried to see me just before a performance like this, I'd be furious. I didn't know you were so I good was, about things like this. I am like furious. This. Are you? No, I'm not really. I don't know. That's all right. Yeah. Uh, the rumor that you're going to call me on stage during the, the show to sing uh, something from Gilbert Sullivan, I think, is very exciting. Uh, is there any truth to this? Uh, yes, there is. You have to come on at the end and do the duet, because we're not doing the duet with Stevie Wonder in the afternoon show, so you can do it. So you and I are doing Ted yes. Willow yes, later yes, on? Sir. Okay, yes, that'll be good. Sir. A girl outside was very worried about your weight and had to know exactly what it is. Do you mind revealing anything that uh, intimate? Uh, yes, uh, 10 kilos. Oh, I'm sure she'll yeah. be glad to know that, and we'll go right to the library to figure it out. Mick, how do you move around in public? Uh, uh, so with a twist and a spin. No, I know that. I mean, I mean, could you go from if you wanted to walk from the hotel over here? Have you ever thought of you know getting a crew cut? I wouldn't get him, man. The policemen are too heavy out there. Yeah. I'd... Does this can this bother you too much? Uh, security can it affect the audience if there's yeah, too yeah. many. It does. Too but aware. you know, you have to try and find happy medium, and <clears throat> one's not totally in control because like. In a lot of these towns, you know, like the police, like they have their own thing of what they're going to do, you know, so, so, you know, they're going to do it anyway, you know, whatever you say, yeah. you know, they're going to, we've got to have X amount of people, or, you know. So it's sort of out of your control. Well, not always, but I mean, you try and talk to them, some of them are really nice and reasonable and some aren't, you know. Do you ever stand on stage and get a sense of menace or, or worry or does it feel about the same each show? Oh, it's too different, yeah. It is different. Yeah, I mean... Can really you walk weird. out and tell what it's going to be like that night? Can you say well, this is a bad night? As soon as you get you... on there, yeah, you know. Yeah. You know what the audience is like. Yeah. yeah. Do you read poetry? No. I know, excuse <laughs> Well, sometimes. But you were registered at a hotel, I won't say what, but under the name of a 18th century poet at one point, and I just wondered if that was... I've been reading for years. Never. <clears throat> no, no. Yeah. His yeah. is only a slim volume. No, it's quite a lot, actually, but I read it once. Yeah. yeah. Do you, do, do you write yourself? I you had notes. <laughs> Notes? <laughs> I, I didn't even thought you had notes. I thought it was all just straight off. What notes? Okay. I, I do it. It's always... Well, what's going through you now? Are you nervous? Are you about ready to bounce on stage? Yeah, do, do you feel uh, any anxiety or anything like that? Yeah. yeah. Why are they afraid of you? Now, I had read all these things about you, and, and um, some people called you the devil incarnate. I don't know who started that. Um, British no, journalists no. and all. I don't know. And yet, uh, the other day, when we were throwing stones into the sea, you were very calm, and you, you're Serene. not terrifying in person. I would have been even... If you'd have come on the horse, maybe I would have turned into a terrifying aspect. How do you know I have a horse? Ah, uh, I know. It's amazing. What else do you want to know about me? Uh, I have a little time here if you want uh, to talk. I don't have much to... I know. Uh, I, I really do appreciate your No, I Well, I have about two minutes. Before. Would you ever do 30 cities in a row this fast again if you... Yeah, yeah. Do it now. You're not Give just... me a week off, though. I just want a week off. You can do it And you again. can go right back into it again? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but a week off. Maybe two weeks. Gee. Some bands do that. I mean, you know, we're not very hard-working, really. Some bands down the road all the time. Is it going on stage with a cane and, and, yeah, and, and, cane and, and, and moving <laughs> the way you do? No, there's a lot of people that do it at 69. I think it's a bit weird, you know, but they, they seem to still get their rocks off at it. <laughs> Marlene Dietrich, she still does it. And she's more than 60. She still does it? Yeah. She you know, did it in London, yeah. Really? I didn't realize she's that. I had rumors that she does, but I didn't I know I've got the right did. person. I'm a bit confused well, at that area. There. Falling in love again. again. Never wanted to. I don't know what am I to do? Can I can't I help it. What am I doing, singing? You're doing very with well. Do you suppose if we? Um, I, I don't know if there's a, your world seems so different, uh, and yet we seem to be able to talk easily. Um, I don't know what You've it is. You've got this mania for talking, though. I mean, I that's do. why. I don't really. I'm not a natural talker. I, I, I could go for months without talking. Are you shy? Would you? Could you go for weeks without saying a word to anybody? Yeah. And, and enjoy I do. It? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Somebody said I never found a companion who was as companionable as, as solitude. I don't know who said it, but that's not That's quite nice. Can you, can you, can I, can I, identify can with I that? give you the next line? Oh, no. Yeah. Cut. You ran out of film. We'll be back after this message with Bobby Fisher. Stay where you are.